Things don't happen overnight. You have to make the emotional and the personal investment to make your dreams come true. What would amazing look like for you? What would amazing look like if you were amazing? If you know what amazing looks like, then why haven't you gotten there yet? I want you to say, the reason I'm not as amazing yet because I hit the snooze button. That's why I'm not amazing right now. The reason why I'm not amazing right now is because I couldn't get up early enough because I told myself I'm not an early person. The people in the world become weaker people. It's by capping your brain. It's by putting this kind of garbage in it about not attacking what you're not good at. There is no shortcut. There is no hack. There's no sweatless solution. You you're gonna have to work. There is always weakness to work on. Always. A lot of them. Why would we allow ourselves to make easy, easy excuses? Why would you allow that? It's not what happened that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens happens to us all. That the key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. Stop being a lazy, bum-ass person that's full of excuses, sitting around on the pity potty, coming up with every excuse in the world as to why you ain't winning. You are the reason you are not winning. Unaware and understanding that this thing that we are dealing with right now in our lives is only temporary. It's temporary and it will not last forever. You must realize that you must grow enough tenacity within yourself to press on. Are you going to put in the work or not? Are you going to find a way to reach your goals or not? The minute you start thinking, I don't want to do this. The minute that feeling creeps in, that's the time you're having a test. The minute you feel the ache of, I'd rather do something else, I'd rather do anything else than this. That's the test. The minute you train yourself to say, this is my opportunity, is the minute you go from loser to fucking winner. And this is a skill. This is something you practice. You are amazing and you have limitless potential. So start tapping into it by not sitting on the fence. Get up, get out and get it done, baby. Let your work get your opportunity. Let your work get your praise. Let your work open up doors. Let your work get people paying attention. Let your work get the whole world to notice. Stop thinking. Stop procrastinating. And you got to work. So you got to make sure that you constantly are rewriting your book. You have to constantly rewrite your book every day of your life. Mm. You know, and that, these aren't just words I say. This is how I have to live. Like, these are conversations I have with myself. And I say it everywhere I go. The most important conversation when you have with yourself. Yes. You live with it every single day. But most of our conversations are not the right ones. They're not the ones that are going to push us to the place we need to go. They're the ones that are going to keep us sitting in that toxic environment that you've helped create and everybody else helped create. And you just live in it. You live in that muck. And that conversation just plays in your head. And that becomes you. So my first conversation when I was absolutely nobody. And that's one thing you have to say. We live in a world now that's so kind. We, we find the kind way around everything. Like, if you don't look good, I have to find a kind way of saying, I don't like your shirt. Right. That's not the approach. The approach you have to take, at least I took, you take whatever approach you want. The conversation had to be a real honest conversation in the accountability mirror, guess what? I was fat. Don't find a kind word to say that, you know what, I've gained some weight. No, you're fat. When I couldn't read, not like, hey, you know, you've been learning this. Again. No, I cannot read. For fourth grade reading level, I'm struggling. And sometimes I call myself stupid. Not in a way to put myself down. So don't take it like, my God, those are so hurtful. Yeah, they're hurtful. This honest. The conversation has to become an honest conversation of where you're at mentally. Where am I at mentally? I look like sh I feel like sh I'm not just, I'm, I'm falling behind in school. I'm lazy. My house is a mess. You have to look at what it is and call it what it is. Don't find words to make yourself feel better because that's what,
So we hang around people that make us feel better, that tell us what we want to hear, not what we need to hear. And so we stay away from those people. And we stay away from those people, like our internal dialogue becomes that kind, it's okay, it's not okay. So that's where it starts. It starts with that accountability of it's not okay anymore. This can no longer be okay. And calling yourself out for exactly what you are and exactly how you need to fix it. That's where it starts. Take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. So one said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist, or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. And he said the people that get along in this life look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. They create them. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies, and changing your strategy means reinventing your life. Recreating you, and you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. You, can, you have the power to make that decision. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here. Your self-confidence is closely connected to your self-esteem and to how much you like yourself. Dr. Nathaniel Brandon calls self. Esteem your reputation with yourself. It is how you feel about yourself and your abilities in relation to any situation that determines how much you like yourself and consider yourself to be a valuable and worthwhile person. The more you like yourself, the better you do. The flip side of self-esteem is what psychologists call self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is a measure of how effective and competent you feel you are to perform a particular task or to achieve your goals. This is called performance-based self-esteem. What this means is that if your self-confidence and your belief in yourself are determined by your self-esteem or how much you like yourself is determined by how capable you feel you are in any given set of circumstances. For example, if a problem comes up at work or home and you are so familiar with it that you can solve it quickly and correctly, your self-efficacy and your self-esteem goes up you feel more capable and confident and more willing to take on other challenges and difficulties. You feel more positive and optimistic. You feel like an excellent person. If, on the other hand, a problem or difficulty came up and you were unable to do anything to solve it, and you felt frustrated or ineffective, your self-esteem would suffer and your self-confidence would go down. You would feel negative about yourself and your abilities. You might even become angry or depressed. You would feel powerless rather than powerful. That's why they say in playing poker, the winners laugh and tell jokes while the losers say, shut up and deal. The law of cause and effect applies to everything you are today and to everything that you become. If the effect that you desire is high and unshakable levels of self-confidence, then it is necessary that you engage in the same behaviors practiced by others who enjoy high and unshakable levels of self-confidence and you will soon experience high levels of self-confidence yourself. Studies conducted on thousands of men and women who have moved from ordinary to extraordinary performance and who have moved from feelings of inadequacy to feeling great about themselves 
show that there is a direct cause-effect relationship between competence and mastery on the one hand and self-confidence on the other. To attain this wonderful, healthy feeling of optimal performance, you need clear goals, challenging standards, regular feedback, total concentration, step-by-step, step success, and the feeling that you are expanding your capabilities to a new, higher level. When you have created a situation in which you experience all of these, you sense that you are working at the outer edge of your own personal envelope. You feel that you are getting progressively better and better at something you are ideally suited to do. And that while you are still working within the range of your capabilities, you are stretching yourself at every moment. When you are caught up in this kind of experience, you often lose track of time. You become unaware of hunger, thirst, or fatigue. You feel calm and clear-headed and euphoric. Tests show when you are in this state of flow, your brain releases endorphins, nature's happy drug which causes you to feel happy and energized. Often, while you are in this state, the rest of the world seems to slow down.